Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Lindar Gouvelazi and coming up in today's newscast. One Palestinian killed in clashes between Palestinian security forces and gunmen in Nablus. Prime Minister Yair Lapid and Turkish President Erdogan in a first meeting on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in a sign of warming ties between the two countries. And Israel is gearing up to launch its fifth coronavirus vaccination campaign. What will it entail? Clashes erupted Tuesday between Palestinian security forces and Palestinian gunmen in the city of Nablus in the West Bank. Kayla Eberlin with the report. A Palestinian man was killed overnight on Monday during clashes between Palestinian security forces and Palestinian gunmen in Nablus in the West Bank. The man was named as Firaz Yaish, age 53. The clashes, which continued into Tuesday, erupted after Palestinian security forces arrested two Palestinians, including Mossab Shayer. A Hamas commander wanted by Israel. Shayer is said to have been closely associated with Ibrahim al Nablusi, who was killed during an Israeli anti terror operation in Nablus last month. In response to the arrest, Palestinian factions in Nablus called for a general strike, threatening the Palestinian Authority not to hand over Shayer to Israeli authorities. Both terror groups, Hamas and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, condemned the arrest by the PA and said it was carried out in service of the Israeli occupation. The Palestinian Authority operation comes in the wake of Israel's Operation Breaking the Wave, which has seen nightly raids in the West Bank to curtail terrorist activity. And as the Palestinian Authority loses popularity to rival factions such as the Palestinian Islamic Jihad and the Fatah, it also receives harsh criticism from Israel over its lack of ability to rein in Palestinian militants. Meanwhile, overnight on Tuesday, the IDF, the Shin Bet and the Israeli border police arrested eight wanted Palestinians throughout Judea and Sumeria. According to the IDF, during the operations, Palestinians hurled stones and Molotov cocktails at the IDF soldiers, likely injuring one. All the suspects were handed over to authorities for further questioning. And joining us now with more on the situation in Judea and Samaria is founder and director of Palestinian Media Watch, Itamal Malkus. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So first of all, what can you tell us about the current situation in the West Bank and in Nablus in particular? Well, <clears throat> Israelis have a tendency to look at uh, what happens um, between uh, in, in the West Bank as, uh, as from a very Israeli perspective, the Palestinians uh, look at it as a tremendous competition between uh, Hamas and Fatah, uh, in addition to looking at it as Israel. Uh, and Hamas and Fatah, uh, as you know, have been uh, warring uh, for decades, and uh, that's what's going on right now is uh, it, it has reached ahead. Um, Abbas and Fatah is very, very weak. Uh, I think Hamas still isn't forgiving Fatah for, for canceling the elections that were supposed to be held last year when Hamas would have become the official leader, uh, the official rulers of the Palestinian Authority through an election. Um, and they are now using their muscle every which way they can. Uh, they can't really do it from Gaza because then they might be punished by Israel. So they're doing it as much as they can in Judea and Samaria. Uh, and that's what this is all about. This is all about internal fighting between Hamas and Fatah and, and very little to do really directly with Israel. I mean, who is Musab Shtaye? And, you know, his arrest sparked these, these protests, sparked this, you know, the, these uh, warring factions. Why? <clears throat> Fatah is afraid that uh, Hamas will eventually become strong enough uh, to, to do the same thing they did in Gaza and take over. Israel is, in fact, afraid of the same thing. Uh, the reason why there is such very, when there is security cooperation, it is specifically for that reason. Fatah wants Israel to go in and take out the, the threats to Hamas. There apparently was some reason why uh, this particular person was dangerous for Fatah right now. Uh, could we get Fatah right now? And uh, so he was arrested. 
uh, of course, Hamas, uh, instead of portraying it as part of the ongoing battle between Hamas and Fatah, they're portraying it as if they did this on behest of Israel, uh, which is also possibly the case. We don't really know. But the point of the matter is this Hamas, over the years, there are periods when the incitement on Palestinian TV against Hamas is, is more intense than the incitement against, uh, against Israel. Uh, in fact, Fatah is much, much more afraid of Hamas than they are afraid of the Israeli leaders. Uh, and, uh, and that's really what's playing out there. It's this ongoing battle between Fatah and Hamas. So, you know, the Palestinian Authority, as you mentioned, uh, Fatah clearly weakened, losing support among the Palestinian people if Hamas were to take over. I mean, what does this mean for Israel? What it means for Israel is uh, there are two ways of looking at it. On the one hand, we have a, uh, an open terrorist organization uh, in the West Bank, which will, uh, the same way they uh, lob missiles from uh, Gaza to Sterot, potentially they could be lobbing missiles from, uh, from West Bank cities uh, into Israel and, and homemade rockets. That's the, that's the one side of it. On the other side, um, Israel would have much, much more flexibility to fight and defeat Hamas um, in the in the Palestinian uh, cities in the in the West Bank. Uh, just look at the at the battles that we've had with Fatah over the years. Um, look at the Intifada, for example. That was Fatah, Mahmoud uh, Yasser Arafat led uh, Intifada. We lost 1,200 people because we didn't want to go in and uh, and destroy the Palestinian Authority because they were seen as the peace partners. We wouldn't have that kind of limitation were Hamas to um, to uh, flex its muscles in in the West Bank. Um, long term, Fatah is raising a generation on virtually the identical ideology that Hamas is vis-a-vis -vis Israel. Uh, the, the, the children that are brought up in the Hamas uh, summer camps are learning about the glories of fighting Israel, the glories of uh, Shahada martyrdom. Uh, they're learning that uh, all of Israel uh, is really part of occupied Palestine. The, the messages coming from Fatah to its people and its children are identical to Hamas. Uh, so there's even a possibility, as, as tragic and as crazy as it may sound, we might have more flexibility in fighting Hamas um, in, uh, in the West Bank than we even do fighting uh, against Fatah. And speaking of uh, fighting in the West Bank, you know, what about Operation uh, protect, uh, Breaking the Wave? How much longer will this operation continue? I mean, with the weakened uh, PA, essentially this could continue on indefinitely. This could continue for a very long time, especially when it's going on at a pace of uh, uh, individual arrests as opposed to a major invasion, which some people are talking about right now. All right, Itamal Malkus, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. And in related news, Palestinian schools in East Jerusalem announced a strike Monday in protest of proposed Israeli curriculum reforms. The controversy surrounds content in some textbooks that has been deemed as incitement that the Education Ministry has asked to be removed. Joining us now with more on this is Dr. Eldad Paldo, researcher with the Institute of Asian African Studies at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and research director at Impact SE. Thank you for joining us. Hi, how are you? Great. So what exactly is the content that the education ministry would like removed from, from these textbooks? Basically, the curriculum in uh, East Jerusalem is the Palestinian curriculum. The same curriculum that uh, we heard in the earlier interview is packed with anti-Israeli material, ranging from uh, jihad to uh, describing Israel as an invader, settler, uh, uh, colonialist, and so on and so forth. The main problem is that you have only the hate, only the criticism across the curriculum. And uh, this is uh, pretty bad for uh, schools in uh, the West Bank and Gaza. But when it comes to Jerusalem, that is a mixed city of uh, Jews and Arabs uh, living together, then uh, it's, it's a question, uh, what, uh, how, how is it possible that in some of the schools uh, you, you teach hate against other neighbors, people you, you meet in the market, you meet in the workplace, you meet in, uh, in um, gardens, parks, whatever.
To watch full episodes of ILTV's Israel Daily and tons of other content from Israel, visit our website at ILTV.tv or download the ILTV Plus app.